of us sprinting through the woods at full speed. They were chasing us, hunting us. I could hear them yelling in the distance. She was unconscious in my arms. She was so beautiful, so innocent. I couldn't let them have her. I had to protect her, keep her from them. Who knows what they would do to us, to her if they caught us. Surely they would kill me on the spot and take her. For what purpose I could only imagine of the most horrific nightmares my mind could conjure. No, I wouldn't, couldn't allow that to happen. I still heard them giving chase, screaming in hatred towards us, their words barely tangible. Branches hitting my face, my lungs on fire. Every breath I took felt like they would explode, but I could not stop. Not now. I was gaining ground, spreading the distance between us. She was starting to feel heavy in my arms, but it didn't matter. I had to keep her safe from them. I glanced back towards the distant sound of a gunshot and lose my footing. I tumbled down a short embankment and lose my hold on her. The rich smell of earth invading my senses as I land face first on the forest floor. She hit the ground and a soft moan escaped her lips. I scramble to my feet and I quickly look her over. She seemed to be alright, so I quickly swoop her back into my arms and cradle her gently. It would be nightfall soon. We would be safer then, hidden in the clouded shadows of darkness. I continued on, my only destination to get away from those that hunted us. I come across a stream and wade through it in hopes it will distort our trail. As the water swished to and fro, she let out another whimper and tried to speak, but I quickly shushed her and told her to stay quiet in the most calm tone I could muster given the circumstances. I gently covered her mouth with my hand and buried her face against my chest. The thought of them possibly hearing her or her crying in fear and them somehow hearing sent shivers down my spine. She couldn't understand the dangers we were facing. She was far too young to comprehend what was happening. Nightfall seemed to come quickly wrapping its shadow-laden fingers around all that surrounds us. I felt a wave of her leaf course over me, but also the chill of the night air. I was barely clothed, but it seemed like only rags at this point draping over me. She was only in a torn nightgown as we started this race for safety in the early hours of the morning, and I was forced to take her from her bed and flee the house. They gave chase immediately, but my footing and strides were sure as we evaded them through the forest those first few hours. Luckily for me, us... I was able to create a considerable advantage in distance then. I could no longer hear them at this point, but I could feel her start to shiver in my arms as we pressed on. I felt the icy cold drop of rain hit my face as I tried to hold her closer, to somehow allow the little heat my body was producing to will away the cold from her, but I knew I needed to find some form of shelter soon, or she may succumb to the elements and all this may be for naught. I felt a bolt of panic run through me and my blood went cold at the thought. What if I could find no shelter? What if she dies in my arms while I searched? What if all this fleeing, running to ensure our safe getaway ends with that? What if it gives them the time they needed to catch up to us? I shook my head in an attempt to rid myself of these horrors, these doubts, and press forward. I see a rocky outcrop in the distance. Maybe there would be a cave or a deep overhang to shelter us from the rain and wind. I hear her faintly moan out that she is cold barely audible over my own panting breath. I again quietly shush her and tell her everything would be all right. I run for the edge of the rock face and start desperately scanning the area for something, anything that can shelter us. Finally, I spy something that looks like an opening of some sort, darker than the rest of the rocks, indicating that it was an opening or possibly a crevice of some sort, and I make my way to it. She felt so weak in my arms now. Limp, as I'm sure she passed out from hunger, cold, and exhaustion from the excruciating journey we had just endured. I, too, was starving as my stomach felt as though it was consuming itself. I had spent so much energy in this escape, and now that I had stopped for a moment, it began to catch up with me as every muscle in my body screamed in agonizing pain. But I had to listen. I set her gently down on the cave floor. I had gone in as deep as I could, but she was out cold. I took the shredded remnants of the shirt I had on and placed it over her to hopefully give her some warmth, to hopefully keep her alive as I went back to the cave entrance to listen, to see if I could hear those that hunted us. Nothing. All I could hear was the faint breeze that cut through the trees and the drops of rain that cascaded down the rocks. The rain had let up some, but it was still far too damp and cold to force her to travel anymore. It was far too dangerous. I had lost them. Finally, the pursuit was over. At least for now, I was victorious. 
I made my way back into the cave and took the rags away from her face. She was shivering in her sleep, but alive. Finally, I could eat. I smiled as I looked down at her, exposing my sharp teeth resembling those of a shark and the saliva rolling between them as my mouth watered. I sunk my claws deep to her flesh and started ripping at her stomach, shredding into it as her precious blood covered my hands, beautifully contrasting against my pale skin. The metallic scent of a crimson life force perforated the air around me. I shoveled the first bites into my mouth and began to ravage her intestines. Still warm, still fresh. She tastes so heavenly. I love it when they're alive. Fresh meat is so delectable. I am so happy that I was able to evade her family and the sheriff searching for her. I am sure they would pick up the search in the morning, but it would be far too late by then. They may find what's left of her, assuming she was eaten by a wild animal, but I... I would be gone, long gone from here. But for now, I will savor every morsel of my meal. Yeah.